All right. Up next, we have box number five. Uh, Gold Cards Control. This will be the first one I have that does not have one of those knights in them. Um, but I bought them because, again, the, I was buying them strictly because I thought the characters looked kind of neat. I didn't look at their uh, abilities or any of that stuff. I was just like, ooh, these knights look neat. These guys look cool. And everything spilled out in the box. There we go. Um, I also, because I have the uh, base game, I tried not to buy, at least right now, I didn't try to buy uh, box sets that already had the characters I already had from the base game, because I have six of them. Um, so the other four boxes that I did not buy yet have um, at least one of each of those characters. Uh, so that's why I was kind of avoiding them too. Because I was like, I'd rather get newer, all new characters if I can. So we're going to get our two token sheets. Nothing special there. We're going to get our checklist. Uh, let's look at our maps quick. Let's see if we got anything new or interesting. We've got a new type of map. we got the harvest, which has some demonic roses. Um, and it has you collecting these flowers. Uh, and lots of stuff is just replaceable. So it's like this type of enemy instead of this other type of enemy. Or collect this potion. Or collect a coin. Or collect these flowers. Um, and then they have different things down the bottom. Which are sometimes even on different maps or in different spots. Uh, so this is number 12 by the way. Um, but yeah, they're not... They're not going to be 100% all unique, but that's fine. Again, because like I said, the base game has a double-sided board, so this having a different double-sided uh, thing gives you something different to do. Uh, so here we have number 27, the Qatar Challenge. The Qatar is this guy up here. <coughs> uh, and he's like a big bad um, in the series. And then he has his offspring that you have to fight. And you have a couple different challenges, uh, some different timeline effects that'll happen. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And what's also neat is, I thought he was in this set. Yeah. So in this Dark Hero set, there's actually a Qatar figure. So if you bought this set, you can actually put your figure on here and use him as a, um, as a standing, plus in some of the other, I think in that actual box set too, there's tokens uh, for some of these offspring. So if you had this and you bought that Dark Hero set, you can even put those tokens down on top of these guys as like, oh, I beat them. You can remove the token rather than trying to remember. Um, although I think that's what they have these little death icons for on these cards or like the flag to show that you captured it like hey i got this flower or i killed that guy i think that's why they put those in there so you're not trying to just remember all right let's look at the other map okay so we got another sylvian duel so we got another woodland duel uh so it has more of these schaefer archers which you can resurrect and they do stuff uh, but they're in different spots. There's different boundaries to go around. Like you're hiding behind these trees and stuff. Um, and that's set number map number seven. And then we got another ice map, which is map number one, which is the Pingwinkle Challenge. Um, so instead of having them shamans, we have little baby ping pingwinkles. Uh, so again, it's like a little evolution. You could play this one, then you could. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, then you could play the other one, which has like the more powerful things like, hey, you beat up all these babies. Um, now you have to fight the harder shaman ones. Um, so yeah, some interesting little things there. You can make little campaigns out of it. Alright, let's jump into the cards. We're going to start with Bill Tell. Um, if I remember correctly, Bill Tell is also in the base game. Um, 
So I have a duplicate of him now. Uh, here is his card, or his figure, I mean. His, his arrow is bent. Um, should be up into his bow, but that's alright. I can probably fix that later. Usually some good old hot water helps you bend these figures back. Um, yeah, so I should already have him in the base game. But, you know, having two of them just means either A, I could resell him or repaint him. Uh, maybe find someone that owns base set 2 or bought only bought quests. Uh, so maybe they might want some of these figures uh, that they can't find. You never know. Or you just have two people play as the same character. Uh, again, you own the game, do what you want. Um, so we have Bill Tell. He has a Plaguing Arrow, uh, which is just some pretty long range. And then he has a Long Shot. For this turn, Bill Tell spells gain plus three max range, but he loses all his MP. Uh, so it's basically saying he can't move, but now his spell, instead of doing eight, can now do up to 11 distances away. Uh, so he can really shoot people from a good distance. Um, Alright. Our next one we're going to look at is... Boo Ming. Uh, so he's like this dark elf looking guy. Like he's got some knives out. He's got a knife in his pocket. He's got a little gun there. Pretty sinister smile. Pirate do-rag. Uh, pretty evil looking. Uh, I love the artwork on the back of the cards, too. It really um, makes the characters, like, just that much more. Uh, so, he's a rogue. Uh, he has X-Shot spell, and he also has Granado Throw. Place a Granado on the target enemy cell. Uh, it's basically, you place a little token down, and then after a certain amount of turns, it blows up and does damage. Alright, we have uh, Dai Curry. Little fairy. Again, she's a lot darker than she looks in the picture. So I don't know if just like... I got darker characters for some reason. Or they just took liberties with the artwork. Uh, I do like the clear wings though. That's pretty cool. Alright. What does she do? She is... So she has a gold game. Which means she's a rare. Um... She's an Impriza. Or Inripsa? I'm not sure. Uh, she has Wounding Word. So she can do some uh, damage there. Or she has Sweet Nothing. Which is a healing spell. Uh, so not much else. She either does one point of damage. Or she does one point of healing. Uh, she has no extra powers. Um, you might be like. What's the point of that for a rare? Um couple of reasons why is because one she's a level one character uh so if you're playing like a team you kind of build based on number of points uh so like for example this guy's a six so if you're playing like a 10 10 point game you can only include another up to four points uh with this guy but you can include you know eight more of him and then like comparatively these other two guys are three two and one so here you can actually be like we're gonna play a game here you can almost be like these three guys are six points versus this guy at six points if i was gonna play a game with this box i'd be like i get this guy you get those three guys so yeah she might not be that powerful but she doesn't cost a lot per team wise additionally she also has uh zero for initiative um which is kind of a downside, which means she's going to go last. Um, but again, if you also kind of look at combining theirs, you have a 7, a 2, and a 0. So like Bill Tell is going to go like right away, and then these other guys are going to go a little bit later. Um, another thing just to compare for all these, so they have 6, 7, and 5 health. So that's 17 health between all three of them. Um, so then if we look at... Gotard. Uh, this is a guy the box is based off of. He has 16 health himself. So you can kind of see the differences there. He costs a 6, so okay, comparing again to all three of them. Um, he also has 4 abilities, where all the rest only have 2. He has an extra power. 
Uh, so yeah, he's like a big, big name character in this show. He's like a big badass. I mean, look at that. He's a giant sword, and he's not wearing a shirt. Uh, he looks like he's gonna kick some ass. He's like a big barbarian type guy. Um, and I not. That's me saying by looking at him, not based on how he is in the lore of the game or the cartoon. Because um, I don't know that for sure. I'm just going by looks. But he has Celestial Sword, which has a cross effect. Uh, Sword of the Just inflicts plus 5 damage to character level 5 or higher. So like that wouldn't actually hurt um, any of the other guys you're fighting. So that's kind of interesting. Um... Charge moves two cells closer to target your character, and then he has super cut, uh, which doesn't even cost generally cost anything, but he'll reduce one movement and one AP. Um, and then he has critical hit and gold minator. so it's a special ability that says, uh, gold minator every time he defeats another. Crossmaster, Goldcart heals himself by three. So there's again, if he's fighting the other three guys, it might seem one versus three isn't fair, but if he takes any of them out, he all of a sudden heals three. Um, and right, right now, his abilities, he can do one, one, or two. Uh, so he's not going to do a super ton, but he has options of doing a bunch of extra damage to them versus just based on their thing, is he's a 1, a 1, and a 1. So none of them are going to ever do more than 1 damage, generally. Um, he has dodge, he has resistance, so that kind of helps. Um, but that's kind of a fun way, too. You can just buy one of these packs, you can play with all four characters, have them beat the snot out of each other. Alright, so our last pack for this video is going to be the Bad Boys, which is set number 7. So that means I need to pick up, what is it, four, four, five, six, and eight, I think. Alright, come on out of there, guys. Alright, so let's look at what we got here in this last one. We're going to, of course, again, get our two token sheets. We're going to get our checklist rules on how to play. We're going to get some maps to look at. So here we have a little bit different map than what we've seen before. We've had we had some, play, uh, some, some like this, but that one had monsters. This one has some potions. And some uh, big flowers. So it's the Countryside Duel uh, number 22. Um, the big thing here is so just why it's like, well, there's no enemies on the map. It says, Vicious Bramble spell out of the ground. Your Crossmaster suffers one injury no matter where it is on the battlefield. So every time it hits one of those things, you're going to take one damage. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which is enough to take out um, a lot of the characters. Um, and then plus now if you're doing a duel against someone else. They're going to be hitting you. Um, during that time. So it's kind of, kind of interesting. The other side which we haven't seen before. Um, Obsidian Demon Challenge. We have some Obsidian Demons and some Mofets and some Maglobs. There's lava. There's ice dopuses, which are things you have to pick up. <coughs> um, different timeline effects. So there's this big giant guy you can fight. Um, take out some of the other small guys. There's a lot more going on in this one. It's more, again, it's the boss battle, kind of like that other, um, the other guy who fought, the Krotar. And the Kraken, even. Um... Alright, maps number three and four. I did not even say what number that was. Just in case people are like keeping track of this. That was number 32. Uh, what's also interesting is they don't go like, 
one, two, three, four are ice, and then five, six, seven, eight are this. Um, so yeah, I don't really know why they linked certain ones to certain ones. They linked the Terra or the like elemental ghost, the Terra, Arrow, uh, Fire ones to the uh, elemental knights, but then all the rest of them are just kind of random. So here we have a, a glacial duel. Um, so this is kind of like maybe like the beginning of your ice one. Um, could be the end of your ice one. There's no penguins on here to fight. Um, otherwise, yeah, just the ice map to fight on. And then here we have Hunt. Uh, that was number nine. And here we have number 14. Hunt for the Emerald Dophus. Um, and Dophus are like these eggs. Uh, so this is just, yep, yeah, there's some, uh, growlers here that'll attack you. Um, some cracker rocks. So it's a little bit interesting stuff. Alright, now let's look at our last four characters. And then we can move on. We're gonna start with... <coughs> Excuse me. Oscar Tass. So he is also in the base game. Uh, Arena. So you might have already seen him if you've watched that video. He's a, a SRAM. Um, he has Khan. He steals health. Or he has Devious. He pierces armors. And he has the armor power. Uh, he's this neat little skelly boy. Um, like there's, even like the detail. Like he has a skeleton chest in there. He has a skeleton feet. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Again, like, I have a duplicate of this. That's fine. Like, I'll put a little cool skelly man on my desk. I am fine with that. Uh, we have Quentin Flush. There we go. They weren't quite focusing. So we have another cat person. Uh, Escaflip. Um, he has lottery. Play heads or tails three times. Quentin, if tails, Quentin Flush suffers one damage. Uh, if heads, inflict one damage. So it's normally going to do one, but then you can do one extra. So it's another gambling cat. So this one has one die, but in this hand he has double dice. They're kind of neat. Um, where's my other one? So there's your... Just as a comparison, so they're otherwise going to look very much the same, but yeah, it's neat, it has a little different item. A little bit of kind of neat if his second ability rolled dice, since he has a die rolling card, or uh, thing. So we have Luke, Luke, Yuluke, I guess. I mean, you can make some really odd names here. So this is a rare card. Um, it's a craw type. Uh, Frozen Arrow. Uh, so 2 to 3, but you get minus 1 MP and minus 1 AP. Um, and then Repelling Arrow pushes 2 cells back, but she also has resistance to uh, both uh, water and leaf. And there we go, so we got another Archer. So this Archer is going to be the same... Um, look as this character. And see just different colors, different, like, a little bit even, like, different style bows. Like, hers has a little arching thing on the side. His is straight. Um, and then if I can hold a third character, Bill Tell, who's from the base set, is the same model. Who also has a different style bow. So it's kind of neat. So, like, it's three characters. that have three different color schemes. Um, hair color, eye color, all that stuff is different. Plus, their bows are all different. Um, so that's actually, again, that's one of the neat things about... They're three, they're the same model, but it's completely different things. And it's not just a different paint job. Alright, then our final character for this is our final knight. We have the Darkness Knight. So this would be all five knights, who's also a rare, so he's just black, uh, to go with the rest of them. 
or it's kind of like a dark blue, I guess. I would call him black, though. Um, because he's darkness. So, Night Tormentor, he has Cruel Shot, which does one to four range. Um, Devastation, which has a cross effect. Vile Age, which has minus one AP. Every critical hit counts as double. And Infamy, minus one steals health. Plus, he's also neat because he does four different damage types. So, if someone has a resistance to one type, uh, he can get around that. Uh, he also has the Master Knight ability, which says, Master Knight, the Darkness Knight takes on the powers of all other knights playing on his team, which is why he's not boxed with another knight. But, I mean, if you box all five knights together, this, or, like, you're playing all five, this guy could become a disaster. And then, again, just like I showed in that last one, so you have six versus six. So, if you're having him fight against them he has 15 health and they have five six and ten so they're actually gonna have a little bit more health than him um you know it's all about 20 something but they also only do three damage each where he can do two 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 and two um plus his armor um and like where this character has resistance, he can do two attacks to get around that resistance. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of neat. Each char character has a little thing like that where they can get around it. Um, I just want to look at the other characters quick and see if they're all set up like that or not. I guess I ne until I got to Goldheart, I didn't really look at him that closely. I am missing a character card somewhere. There it is, I think. So, yeah, if we look at the, um, this pack. So this actually is more like three and three and so it's more like two on two. So we have an eight and an eleven and a twelve and a seven. So they're a little bit more evenly matched. So you can play two versus two versus three and one. And the other one is the same way. So you can play like the two knights versus the two non knights. Um, and they're a little bit more even classed. Uh, for like health and all that. Like some might have a little bit more, but some have some extra abilities. Uh, so it's kind of neat. So out of the four packs, um, Two of them um, were basically one, one, one versus three, and the other ones are two versus two. So I just wanted to bring all five knights out here. All right, that's what I got for this video. Uh, check back when I do some more unboxings. See you guys later. Bye.